This is uh, Morten from Inkis TV. Uh, today is a wonderful day here in Denmark. We have uh, nice temperatures and the sun is up and we still have to be inside and we can't go out because of this stupid corona thing. But you see, it also has its advantages because uh, during uh, this week and next week, we will talk to a lot of interesting people from the printing industry. So, uh, and today I'm so fortunate that I'm uh, talking to Mark Stevenson from uh, Fujifilm Europe. And uh, Mark, uh, very warm welcome to Inkish on this platform. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to um, to talk to so many people recently. I've been talking online to people all around the world. More than I normally do. That's great. <laughs> I think it's the same for me because, uh, uh, you know, in, in the beginning, I was a little bit sad that I had to use the Skype thing because we like to go out and see equipment and talk to people and, you know, see the printing, amazing printing companies and applications, things like that. But the advantage this way is that we, we get the chance to talk to a lot of people in a short period of time. So uh, thank you again. Uh, one of the things that we uh, I would like to talk to you about is that that uh, uh, Drupa has been postponed. Uh, a lot of exhibition has been postponed. And uh, is there any? Does that uh, does that influence uh, the the work of what you do uh, at Fujifilm immediately, or is it something that you can you can uh, just delay it a little bit? Or how is that from your perspective? Yeah, it was it was a huge thing when Drupa was postponed. Um, everything. I was doing 24-7, not quite 24-7, but seemed like thinking about 24-7, all of a sudden, you know, went on hold. Uh, we had to think, what will this place be like? What will our world be like in 12 months' time? Will we want to say the same thing as we were about to say in three months' time? Mm. Um, and it's a lot different. Of course, the biggest disappointment to me was no Drupa song. Because oh, yeah. That's a massive thing for me because mm. I'm a big Drupa song fan. Uh, I do have a web um page on facebook dedicated to yeah i've seen that I'm, i've seen I'm that and i, I yeah I, and i think i i guarantee you that we will put a text overlay uh with the with the address for it because i think it's so yeah. cheesy that uh, everybody needs to see it <laughs> That's, it, it could cheer you up in a, in a on a dark day um but no seriously um yeah the, the whole thing about okay what were we going to do shall we carry on doing it anyway virtually um, and I'm not sure many people are in the mood to start thinking about capital investments at the moment or seeking out new suppliers or changing suppliers. Um, so we took the decision, OK, we'll we'll keep our, uh, as we say in the UK, we keep our powder dry. We'll uh, we'll not reveal anything that we were going to reveal. Some carried on and, and did so. Um, but we feel like it's uh, timing is all important here. We need to consider Mm. Uh, where our customers are, where our potential customers are. Mm. Um, and probably we'll know more in two or three months' time yeah. and we'll start our plan again yeah. and, and see where we end up. I, I actually understand your approach to uh, keeping your powder dry and, and from that perspective, but uh, from, uh, I mean, as, since you're the marketing manager, aren't you sometimes maybe a little concerned that if uh, all your natural competitors in the market starts to... Uh, blowing the whistles and ring the bells about all their new things that it could keep momentum away from, from Fujifilm? Um, frankly, no. Um, I, I don't know if anyone's listening. Mm. Um, maybe with one ear. Um, certainly in the industry, mm. you know, as soon as someone says, oh, this is the product I was going to reveal, all of us in the industry are all ears. We've got probably a little more time mm. to listen. Mm. Um, but for guys at like the coal face, mm. people working on the front line of print, trying to keep their businesses going or trying to hold their business until it's ready to revive again. I just don't think it's the time for them. Mm. Um, and if there was something revealed over the past few weeks, I think that message will have to be rolled out again. Mm. Uh, we're, we're working far more on a one-to-one -one level. Um, all of our salespeople are not furloughed. They're all working. They're keeping in touch with their customers. Um, they're they're talking to them, asking them how they're doing, asking them how we can help, um, and gathering information for us so we know what levels of business we need to be preparing for for the next few mm. months. Mm. Okay, um, so so uh, so uh, if if 
if <laughs> if any competitors watching this film uh, got the idea that you're not doing anything, that's completely wrong. They you're just doing something yeah. that is maybe less publicly. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, because I the, because the one on one thing is great because you I guess that you have a, a great opportunity to uh, to talk to on one one on one basis with a customer. What are, what what are their needs and 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 where do they mm -hmm. see the future for their own business? So you can actually adopt your communication more specifically to a specific need rather than having a mass communication perspective. Is that correctly understood? Yes, that's right. It's a, it's sales is always a conversation. Um, marketing always. can be broadcasting. Yes. But more and more marketing is becoming a conversation too, mm. like with the likes of LinkedIn and social media. Um, <clears throat> we invite people to talk to us and tell us what they think and how they feel and ask them to interact with us and, and give us information as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, the, the world is changing. I think this particular situation with the virus is, is making us all even more aware of, mm. of what are we doing? What are we saying? Yeah. Are people listening to us? And what could we say that's, that's relevant at the moment? Yeah. Uh, one of the things, I've, and you touched upon it a second ago, is that uh, I think that a lot of people in the industry are, are wondering about how does the world look after this uh, crisis? Because I think that very few people believe that it will be the same, right? Uh, mm. Is that something that uh, Fujifilm on more like a corporate level is starting to discuss or think about, or is it more like on a, on an individual basis uh, so far in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I'm not too involved in our corporate approach. I know there's work going on. Um, I've been talking to our communications, our head of communications, um, and he's got a program starting just talking about the relationship of Fujifilm with his customers and that we're here, we're not going away. Um, I feel particularly comforted by the fact Fujifilm has a lot of other um, things going on within its business rather than, rather than print. Um, you may have seen in the news, you know, the research we're doing um, with um, a coronavirus. Um, it's not an antidote, but it's a treatment. Um, and also some testing, um, some testing products as well. Um, to test if people have the virus or not, as well as our medical division um, with with their um, X-ray machines, um, we've they've been really busy at the moment mm. um, with portable X-ray machines, and also there's a big team at Fujifilm that have been setting up radiographers to work from home. Yeah. So they've been installing equipment in the homes of NHS workers who can then look at um, X-rays and and scans and diagnose from home without having to go into the hospitals. Mm. So that sort of thing makes me think I'm I'm comforted for my own job job security and those of my colleagues because a business with diversity can ride out storms in various areas. Mm. It's, um, and it's, you know, we want to assure people we're we're here for the long term. We're yeah. not just I'm going to fold a, a, a part of the business because at the moment it's facing difficulty. Yeah, um, and um, I think that uh, that running a business with that diversity is is of course uh, with the size of Fujifilm is is must be ensuring for 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 the workers and even for the customers because uh, I guess that you still have operations with existing customers where you need to service the machines and deliver the consumables and all these kind of things and and if you were a small uh, company very fragile that would be uh, something that could be very damaging to to their business obviously um, yeah. <clears throat> one of the things that I'm wondering about and uh, and that is uh, if you look at for example the the uh, the drupa that has been postponed as we just spoke about i'm just you know i'm i look very much forward to that event of course but i but I, what one of the concerns i have is uh, not related to the coronavirus but more related to the fact that a lot of especially hardware vendors are developing um, uh, new products and services around the four year cycle and some as you say have already started to uh, to publish and announce and even uh, expect to deliver solutions just after the summer. Do you think that uh, that this postponing can lead to fewer exhibitors and fewer visitors and then making a Drupal less important from an industry perspective or what is your opinion about that? Yes, I, I did start to think about that. Um, of, of when, as, as we don't know at the moment where, where we're going to be at that time and what the world will look like. Uh, will it be the right timing? But you have to plan for these things in advance and you have to get them ready. And I know the Drupal team is very good at um, 
recruiting people to exhibit. They're probably oversubscribed for the last trooper. Um, so I, I'm not so worried that the, the main players won't be there. I think, I think they will. Mm. Um, what exactly will show at the moment, we may, we may have more to show than we have planned, mm. which mm. would be great. Because you have um, further time to develop things and prepare things. Is that exactly. what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And from, you know, from my understanding of our R&D guys, um, they tend not to work around an exhibition schedule but around a when the technology is working and ready to show. Yeah. Um, and they they would have a very conservative attitude towards that of of not promising too much and then it not being delivered in time. So um, we tend to to work around what what we have to say. Yeah. Um, at that particular time. Okay. So uh, let's cross our fingers that uh, Drupa will be uh, the fantastic, amazing uh, experience as we uh, normally mm -hmm. see and and. Uh, and that will be, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the, the, the group of people working very hard on making you know, that happen, of course. Um, um, the future uh, is, of course, very uh, difficult to uh, predict. Um, to say, um, maybe Fujifilm has a prediction machine for the future. I don't know. You have so many things. Uh, but you've, 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 you've got our secret weapon. Yeah, okay, I wasn't going to talk about it. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, and it's not even <laughs> April 1st, right? <laughs> no, uh, Mark, I was thinking that um, uh, I spoke uh, to an, an industry leader uh, last week, and uh, one of his uh, comments uh, was that he, he uh, kind of predict that the market when it comes to the number of printing companies will have a significant lower number after the crisis because he said that maybe some have overinvested before the crisis and are uh, hit hard by the fact that uh, demand has uh, has decreased over these uh, just it's just a couple of months now right but uh, is that something that uh, that do you share that concern or do you think that we will just come back to normal level of uh, business uh, at some point I keep changing my mind. Mm -hmm. One day I feel, I feel, oh, it's doom and gloom and we're all, uh, another saying, going to hell in a handcart. <laughs> um, uh, but other times you, you look and you think, well, we're good at adapting. Mm -hmm. you know, this industry is good at adapting. It's changed so much in, you know, in the age of digitization. Mm -hmm. It's beaten off some challenges of technologies that were supposed to take over the world and didn't. And it's continued through all that time. Um, and, <clears throat> I think we'll come back. It may take a while. There will be casualties along the way, for sure. Yeah. There'll be some people who don't make it out the other side. Yeah. Um, but we'll come back different. Yeah. And we'll come back with a new mindset. Um, and the survivors will build on that. And they'll be stronger for it. Mm. Um, and, may, okay, maybe it's brought forward mm. some of the hard decisions this industry will have to make. Mm. Um, but... We've got a way of, of, of surviving, yeah, and we'll continue to do that. Yeah, I spoke to our common friend uh, Mark Hinder yesterday, and and uh, he was oh, right. yeah, he was very confident that uh, that there might be a short term effect on this, but there will also be like uh, suddenly there will be a huge demand, and maybe maybe you and him uh, are in uh, more or less in the same boat because maybe the uh, the the biggest change is maybe this is uh, the golden opportunity for cha uh, technology change. I mean, maybe Inkjet is finally really hitting, uh, uh, I wouldn't say mass market because you've been in that market for a long time, but mass uh, vendors or printing companies looking yeah. into these uh, technologies because they become better and better, uh, nicer and nicer quality, uh, uh, operational cost becomes uh, uh, more competitive with offset and uh, mm -hmm. is that something that you can you uh, do you share his uh, ideas about that <laughs> it's interesting i was i was talking to uh, the head of our uk business um end of last week um and he said you know our, obviously our consumable business is down mm. um, and you could say there were two sides to our consumable business there's ink digital ink um for for wide format and for jet press for commercial print and then there's printing plates and he said the biggest hit was on our ink mm. rather than on the plates. The plates were holding up. Mm -hmm. The traditional offset printer was still printing, not the same volumes, mm. but better than the volumes that the, the inkjet users mm -hmm. were doing. Uh, one obvious conclusion here is the amount of events that are going on. Yeah. Well, they've stopped. Yeah. There are no events anymore except online events. Yeah. And you wouldn't necessarily use print to promote those. Mm -hmm. um, so 
there's going to be when this when this finishes there are going to be so many events <laughs> all wanting to happen at the same time um that there, there's going to be a big demand there certainly mm. um and a lot of that work is it obviously will come back as people need to start promoting again um and attracting people to come back to them um and I think there'll be a rush to try and fit everything in at the same time. I think some events will struggle to gain um, attention because there's so many other things happening. Mm. You know, you can't have Wim- you can't have Wimbledon, the Edinburgh Festival, and, and the Euro competition all at the same time. Or no. at least I doubt if that will happen. No. Um, so it's it's going to be managing our way through that. Mm. Um, and and again, yeah, finding out where we are. Mm. But I was I was I, I I totally agree with you. But I was thinking more from from a, a printing industry perspective is uh, is the time now to if you are let's say that you are a, a owner of a printing company and let's say that you have an old press an offset press and uh, you're considering your future and i think that most people agree that the future is digital and i think that most people agree today that quality isn't an issue anymore it's uh, it's maybe a change of mindset uh, more than than anything else, and I was just wondering: Do you think that uh, that the corona, if anything positive comes out of it, is it uh, that uh, that uh, printing companies might take faster decisions to move to digital, like the inkjet offerings, rather than just continue with the offset? Or uh, do you get my point? I get your point, and and I think it's a, it's a guess. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> it's, a total, it's a total guess for me. Um, I. I mean, one of the things that drives uh, what happens with with our commercial in jet press, the jet press, um, is is what what the run lengths are basically. Um, the more short run print there is, the more suitable it is. Mm. Um, and obviously, run lengths are, are declining and have been doing for a number of years and will continue to do so. Whether coronavirus brings a sharper decline in the run lengths, but a, an increase in the number of jobs. That would be the thing that tips the balance. Mm. It's, it's not a quality issue. No, um, it, it's it's an economic issue. Yeah, um, and that's why most people who who bought Jet Press have bought it because there is a solid commercial reason to do so, mm. um, and very often with that new opportunities, new markets, new new things to explore. Mm. But it's got to be based on that commercial decision. Um, and I, that that could yes, it could accelerate. That. Yeah, I, yeah I, I of course I agree with you that it's uh, often driven by the the print runs. But I think everybody's also talking about mass customization, and uh, I think that every interview I've done the past three months has been uh, also in the books business, been like mm-hmm. down to the copies of one. And and I was just wondering the the, the printing companies who are looking to invest right now, uh, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, Maybe they see maybe they see a decreasing demand, or they see an opportunity to create products that you can't do on traditional presses. Uh, but that was mm-hmm. that was the reason why I think that it might be a situation where people could start looking into uh, new technologies rather than uh, continuing with what they have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, there there's an argument to say that you know if you wanted um, greetings cards at the moment. Rather than go to the shop, you could go online and order a personalised greeting card to be delivered. Hmm. Um, so you know there could be that could lead to something healthy for the industry. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's yes, there's, it, a, there's a lot of opinion around this, and I, I don't have a conclusion for you. Uh, Sorry, Morton. And I don't have any <laughs> conclusions either. But I think the interesting thing about this uh, format is that. Uh, that we we have the time to to speculate about things, and I think that mm. you know when you have uh, people that that uh, have a touch with the industry, and and you, I mean, and we have a lot of different opinions that that might help the printers to uh, initiate uh, whatever considerations. Because whatever happens, uh, we have to get back and do some business afterwards. And it's more question about yeah. in what directions we should work, right? So, uh, so yeah, so, I think I mean I think there on that point, it will lead to a more open-minded attitude. Yeah about where we go next yeah. as as print as people in the print industry yeah. it will lead to a more consideration rather than more of the same mm. it will be there will be more consideration about doing things different mm. so in that from that point of view yes that's definitely mm. um some some light yeah <laughs> in a dark situation yeah. yeah um you are obviously out of the uk but you are responsible for the for for the jet presses in in uh, europe um um 
do you see any uh, huge differences in demand in the market in uh, in Europe, or is it is the demand for for jet presses uh, jet presses uh, evenly in in most European countries? It comes in waves. Um, an area will suddenly spring to life, um, and will sell two or three or four jet presses, and then it'll go quiet for two years, mm. and then another. Um, you know, another wave will come, mm. um, and it's it's interesting to try and predict or guess why this is. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's just confidence. You know, people feel well if someone if someone's investing, I need to invest as well. Mm. Um, so we recently, and it's quite frustrating, we have uh, three or four jet presses halfway through installation. And, and you can't finish them right now, or we can't finish them. We can't no. uh, either. Um, there were there were rules in the country that allow us not to travel there, or the owners of the business have said not now. Okay. Um, we just need to okay. to, to wait. Okay, um, that must be frustrating. Another, <laughs> yeah, I think we've got another three in a warehouse, and we're ready ready to ship, but we haven't started yet because again, there's, there's a situation there. Um, so. It's um, at the moment there seems to be a, a real revival in Spain. Oh. So we've got quite a lot going on in Spain at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit in Germany mm -hmm. um, and Italy as well. Mm. So um, that it's, it's that you know that we had a, a revival in Spain maybe three years ago, Spain and Italy, where we put a, multiple machines at the same time, mm -hmm. and it went quiet in that area. Um, the UK woke up. Uh, and now Spain, Spain, and Italy are coming back round again. Mm. So, and it's, I, uh, it's interesting. And I'm so sorry that you don't have any uh, uh, customers nearby me because I want to go and see the ones. Every mm. time I see the 750 or the 720 uh, do their their work, I'm just always amazed mm. about the quality that you deliver. So, uh, can you please sell somebody just in my backyard because I want to go and see it? Yeah. <laughs> there, there's ongoing negotiations mm. in Nordic Scandinavian countries. Mm. Uh, and we're, we're closer than we were. You know, we didn't really have a distributor, mm. and there were other political reasons with other companies we had agreements with. I'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, Mark, uh, it has been a pleasure to talk to you. So uh, I, I appreciate your time, and I thank you very much for your input. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day ahead of you. Yeah, you too, Morton. Okay. Nice to talk. Yeah, thank nice you. to see you, Bob. Bye. Okay. Bye.